So I recently revealed my favorite smartphones of 2022, and some people were particularly surprised that I didn't get all weak at the knees at one very popular blower indeed, Samsung's Galaxy S22 Ultra. This wheel-sized slab was voted the best flagship smartphone of the year by countless tech publications and fellow YouTube twats, even somehow in a world where the Pixel 7 Pro exists. Personally, I think that Samsung's handset is good, if somewhat overpriced. But then it has been many months since I properly reviewed the bugger, in which time it's updated to Android 13 and Samsung's One UI version 5 with lots of other little tweaks and patches along the way. Sadly, one thing that has barely changed is the asking price. The Galaxy S22 Ultra still costs well over a grand, although hopefully that will drop imminently as the S23 series emerges. But in the meantime, as we skip our way merrily and jauntily into 2023, I decided to slap my sim back inside of this absolute beast and see if the overall experience has really changed. So that's enough waffle, here's my long-term Galaxy S22 Ultra review, and for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now, it may be a huge bugger, but at least the S22 Ultra isn't an absolutely unwieldy brick like the iPhone. Those bezels surrounding the screen are actually pretty skinny, so there's next to no wasted space here, while the curvy edges make it a little more hand-friendly. That said, it is still undoubtedly too big, at least for me and my miniature gremlin hands. And it is actually big and heavy enough that I do have to tighten my belt to the next notch along when I'm strutting my way down the street just to stop my pants from falling down. Seriously, you can have all the one-handed modes in the world, but this thing still demands to be clutched tight with both claws to avoid any mishaps. And that's especially true if you're using the S22 Ultra while reclining in bed or on the sofa, for instance, because one wee slip and you'll have this thing embedded in your face for the rest of your natural life. I gotta say, personally, I reckon that design is pretty boring as well compared with a Pixel 7 or an Oppo Find X5 Pro or pretty much anything, to be honest, especially a nothing phone. But then that device does go to the other extreme, hypnotizing you until you go all cross-eyed and start to froth at the mouth. It's kind of a shame that Samsung seems to be sticking with this design for the upcoming S23 series, in fact slapping it on the whole range, because it's just kind of nondescript. I mean the burgundy one's alright, but honestly the complete lack of flair or imagination is a real shame given the enormous asking price. The one good thing about that design though is that it's tougher than Elden Ring after 10 pints of scotch. You've got Gorilla Glass Victus Plus caught on that front end and the back end as well and they're separated by some scratch resistant aluminium. And after many months of punishment, my S22 Ultra is still looking almost pristine, pretty much box fresh. Got a few tiny little nicks on that display, but you really have to scout around in order to find them. Back end is still looking as good as ever. I not particularly good, but at least it's not been scuffed up. And like most rivals, it's fully water resistant. Not even several goes on Splash Mountain would f*** it up. But anyway, the very fact that you're interested in the S22 Ultra likely means that you're after a big blower, so forget about the design. The major factor in how well you get on with this smartphone will likely be your general reaction to Samsung's One UI launcher. And I have to say, Samsung's launcher is still hit and miss in this Android 13 incarnation. On the plus side, Sammy has done a sterling job of keeping this almighty mobile up to date, pushing security patches in a timely fashion. Some of those One UI 5 updates, like the ability to customise your lock screen simply by poking it now, are very nice indeed. Reminders have been overhauled, the notification permissions have been improved, and life just generally made that little bit simpler with lots of neat little tweaks and tools. And then there's the not-so-stellar stuff like the incessant duplication of Google services and apps and the occasional bit of obligatory jank. So as an example, quite often when I'm enjoying an audible audiobook or podcast, I won't actually get the media controls popping up in the notifications panel like I'm supposed to. And occasionally when I have a book playing in the background, the audio will just stop completely dead for absolutely bugger all reason. Great, great features there. Sometimes an app will also straight up refuse to continue downloading files when demoted to the background, similar to what you'll suffer with one of those bloody iPhone thingies. But if you're after a smartphone to stream a lot of movies and TV shows when you're on the go, well the S22 Ultra is still one of the better options out there. That enormous dynamic AMOLED screen isn't far off 7 whole inches and it is still a stunner, although the likes of the Pixel 7 Pro and Oppo's Find X5 Pro will satisfy just as hard. There's no dumb, enormous dynamic island to get in the way of those crisp, beautifully smooth visuals, and those perfectly rich colours really do pack a punch when you're watching animated fare or something a bit more vivid. And likewise, the speakers on the S22 Ultra are fantastic. I never have to scramble for headphones when I get some gaming on the go, and it's just about possible to listen to a podcast or an audiobook in a noisy kitchen. 
Of course, if all you want to do is stream a load of Netflix on the train or the bus or whatever, then you'd be just as well served by Samsung's Galaxy S22 Plus. The main reason to go ultra is Samsung's dinky wee S Pen stylus, which is cunningly concealed in the Ultra's bottom orifice. Fnar fnar. And this is really handy for signing documents on the move or simply doodling on them to, you know, make some corrections or just take little notes in the margins. The S Pen itself is comfortable to wield even though it is teeny and that screen is pleasingly responsive as well even if you don't get the same textured paper-like feel when you are sketching or doodling or whatever. And that is something that you do get on dedicated ink tablets the likes of the Books Tab Ultra but that really does feel like you're scribbling on paper. Beyond the occasional like document editing or scribbling a quick note, I still rarely find the need to use the S Pen, but hey, that's just me. If you like to sketch, you'll probably love this thing. Personally, I've got about as much creative talent as a blind badger that lost all of its fingers in some horrific industrial accident. Although, do badgers even have fingers? No, they don't. They've got paws, right? So yeah, this bit's stupid. Just do not leave it in. Now here in the UK, Samsung's own Exynos 2200 chipset powers proceedings. And while I did see the occasional weird little pause or judder back when I first reviewed the Galaxy S22 Ultra about a month or two after it released, thankfully things are quite a bit smoother these days. I have noticed some slowdown very, very occasionally when I'm flipping through a social media feed or something like that, but generally everything runs as it should. That includes when you're multitasking and gaming as well is also an enjoyable experience. The curved screen isn't ideal, certainly, but it is more than responsive enough while jacking up the graphic settings doesn't make that Exynos chipset sweat too hard. The S22 Ultra does start to heat up a bit if you're playing the likes of Genshin Impact for more than sort of 30, 40 minutes, but no worse than the likes of the Pixel 7 Pro. Sadly, Samsung hasn't tinkered with its gaming features in its latest incarnation of One UI. They're still pretty basic, nowhere near as comprehensive as what you would get on the likes of an Oppo or a Xiaomi smartphone. It's more similar to what you get on those Pixel phones. You've got the likes of a priority mode to block any distractions and a screen recorder to save your bestest skills forever. And that's about it. But one thing that has improved over time here on the Galaxy S22 Ultra is the battery life. You've got a 5,000 mAh cell crammed inside of this enormous chassis. And back when I first reviewed the S22 Ultra, it always did the job just fine. Always got around sort of five to six hours of full on playtime before the battery was drained. However, these days I'm actually getting more like seven to eight hours of screen on time from a full charge. And that includes, you know, doing a good bit of Skyping, gaming, video streaming, camera play, following the Sunderland matches. They desperately try to eke out a draw against Blackpool or 23rd in the fricking league. All of that fun shit. So yeah, whatever optimizations that either Google or Samsung or both have added into Android and One UI certainly doing the job. The Galaxy S22 Ultra offers some of the best battery life on any smartphone you'll find as we merrily skip our way into 2023. And yes, it's not particularly fast uh, recharging when you bung a cable in, but at least you do have the wireless recharging option as well. Now, the camera setup that Samsung has slapped onto the Galaxy S22 Ultra was among the best of its time, and it's still pretty impressive and dependable in a lot of situations, no matter what you're shooting. However, it has been overtaken for low light and nighttime photography by the likes of the Oppo Find X5 Pro and Google's Pixel 7 smartphones. Most punters should be perfectly happy with the results as long as you aren't trying to snap a particularly mobile subject in particularly ambient lighting because you will get fuzzy crappy results. Well of course if the major priority for you in your new smartphone is the camera tech we'll definitely consider the Pixel 7 Pro instead because it's about three or four hundred quid cheaper for one. And while the S22 Ultra used to really impress for its crazy space zoom shenanigans, the Pixel 7 Pro has it at least matched with its own excellent telephoto shooter. And both Samsung and Google serve up an ultra wide angle lens if you want to fit more into the frame. As with that gaming mode, Samsung hasn't really peddled about with the camera features and tools for One UI version 5. So you still got all those fan favorites on there, like so the Pro mode for both photo and video for manually tweaking the settings. That portrait mode is still a cracker, accurately distinguishing living subject from background. And yes, if you absolutely must snap a pic of your dinner before stuffing it in your face, the food mode makes everything look more appetizing. You do, however, have a slightly revamped single take mode now. This allows you to choose exactly what kind of content is pumped out after up to 15 seconds of continuous filming. And as usual, you'll get some proper comedy randomness plus some well-timed stills when you're using it on kids, cats, etc. Selfie fans should also be happy enough, although you will need a super steady hand and head if you're trying to snap your mug in a darker environment to avoid any nasty blur. This here was the result of some pretty slow head movement. In good lighting, you'll get some pretty fine detail. A bit too much if you knock off the beauty mode, actually. Ugh. 
And the portrait mode again is dependable, if not quite as accurate as that rear snapper. And I still reckon that the Galaxy S22 Ultra is one of the best Android options out there for shooting a video with the option of recording up to 8K resolution footage. Although sticking it on 8K does fill up that storage pretty ruddy fast. And personally, I ain't got an 8K telly, so I just stuck with a 4K mode. And what I got was crisp, colourful clips in good lighting and not too much grain in more ambient conditions. Although once again, that Oppo flagship has it beat there. No worries if you need to move around as you shoot because the stabilisation is solid and I appreciated the clear audio pickup, even in pretty noisy environments. It's an almost seamless transition when you're switching between the various lenses as well, so there's really not much to complain about. So that right there, my friends, is my long-term review of Samsung's Galaxy S22 Ultra. And while some areas have improved, such as the battery life, for instance, the overall One UI experience hasn't really been tweaked enough for my own personal preference. And as far as the camera tech goes, it has been surpassed by some big recent rivals like the Pixel 7 Pro. At the moment, it is simply too expensive for what you get, especially when the likes of the Pixel 7 Pro has dropped in price to 749 over the holidays, making it 400 quid cheaper. But Samsung's Galaxy S23 series is just on the horizon, and if the S22 Ultra really drops in price, then it could be well worth picking up. Because the main advantage of the Ultra is that S Pen stylus. So if you're just after a big Samsung blower, I would say save a bit of cash and get the S22 Plus instead. So that's what I reckon anyway. But what do you guys think? Have you been using the S22 Ultra as your full-time smartphone? It'd be great to hear your own personal review down in the comments below. Please do plug subscribe and ding that notification bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. I'm going to do lots of unboxings and reviews of plenty more Sammy blows in 2023. And have yourselves a really great rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.